Windows shortcuts can do a lot more than you think. You know, like all those icons on your desktop, your web browser, your email, applications and programs you have installed, those don't actually live on your desktop. The desktop icons are just shortcuts that redirect to where the program is installed on your file system. These shortcuts are called LNK files. If you right click and open up the properties for these LNK files, you can see their target and the program that it runs and starts up. And inside this target input box, you could change the program that you want to run or add arguments or parameters or syntax that changes how the program operates. Honestly, you have basic code execution with just a single click, and it's all natural trusted applications on a Windows operating system. Like say you wanted to bundle up and hide a sneaky PowerShell script, or some batch syntax to stage malware or do something for the sake of ethical hacking. You can do all of that with just this LNK shortcut file. And on top of that, you have all the benefits of this file type. You don't have a file extension that's displayed. You can change the icon. You could even run the program in a minimized window so it's not shown. But this isn't an infinite playground. There is a limit as to how many characters you can supply for a command or program set as the target. Eventually, Windows just cuts you off. I can't enter anything else in this input box. That is the problem. We can't as easily do anything and everything we want with a basic, regular, or vanilla Windows shortcut file. But we can try a few tricks. We could actually create what's called a polyglot, or a file that can be read and interpreted with multiple different languages or file formats all at once. A polyglot is simultaneously both one kind of file and another kind of file all at the same time. Like, could we cram an entire executable program into our LNK file so it's all one standalone file? Maybe we could do something with like alternate data streams or try some other creative techniques, but I wanted to show you this one really interesting option. You can actually add file contents or just append data, whatever you want, to the end of an LNK file and your computer just doesn't care. If you click on a shortcut file, even with extra data just tacked on to the end, it'll still operate and run like a normal LNK file and start the target. That gives us some leeway to potentially create a polyglot. We just need to know what other programming language or file format is a bit lenient with other extra data just randomly being included. And thankfully, there is one perfect candidate for this, a Microsoft HTA file or a hypertext application. At its core, an HTA file is just HTML code that could be naturally rendered and displayed within Windows. HTML doesn't really care if there's just extra data because it will display it outright. But it also allows us to run other built-in and native languages on the operating system like Visual Basic Script or JScript. And while those might not be everyone's favorite language to work in, that gives us room. Using Visual Basic Script or JScript within an HTA file embedded inside of an LNK shortcut file, we can break past the character limit of the target property and we can run whatever code we want, even then call out to PowerShell or Batch, other executables or anything. So that is the premise, an LNK HTA polyglot to do anything we want, even in just one single standalone shortcut file. Now let's go ahead and build one together. But before we dive in, I do wanna tell you about this other awesome and incredible resource to learn even more tips and tricks like this. If you haven't seen the pay what you can training from Anti-Siphon Training, it is a gold mine. Alongside Black Hills Information Security, Active Countermeasures, Wild West Hacking Fest, and all of the incredible organizations from John Strand, with the Pay What You Can training, you get to choose the price tag for education in cybersecurity, both offensive and defensive. It is a great place to learn and enhance your career. If you're interested, there is a link in the video description, but honestly, I really recommend all their incredible stuff and I am super duper thankful for all their support and sponsoring videos just like this. Now, let's get to it and create our LNK HTA Polyglot. I am inside of my Windows Virtual Machine and I will open up Notepad and enter the syntax for a super simple HTA file. 
I'll just type in here, we are running the HTA file, and I'll save this as code.hta on my desktop. When I hit save as, we wanna make sure to select all files as the save type so we can maintain and keep track of the .hta extension. Now, if I double click on the icon on my desktop, we see it open up and simply display, we are running the HTA file. I didn't add any real code here, but we will super duper soon. We're starting small. Next, I will right click on my desktop, select new and create new shortcut. We can click browse and navigate to the location of a regular program that a person might use, like your web browser, Google Chrome, right? We'll select that, but then we'll need to name our shortcut. Now, here's the thing. This will not be our final shortcut. We'll just sort of build off of it. It'll be like the skeleton or a blueprint that we'll use to create the final and actual Windows shortcut file. So I'll just simply name this blueprint. Obviously, clicking on this shortcut, we just open up Google Chrome, normal functionality of a Windows shortcut file. But now that we have all the puzzle pieces, we can start to put these two files together. I'll open up a command prompt and CD to change directory into the desktop. Now I'll use a little trick with Windows commands to sort of combine and put these two files together. I'll enter the command copy, with a slash lowercase b argument, and then the absolute path of the first file that we want, our blueprint.lnk file, in my C users, desktop, whatever. Then I will add a plus sign to sort of add on or append our second file, code.hta. And finally, we'll supply the output file that we want, and I'll call this chrome.lnk, since it'll look like, and I want it to act and feel like another shortcut to Google Chrome so that our user might unknowingly run our malware or fall for our social engineering. Now, when I hit enter, that will create our combination file, our LNK and HTA polyglot. Now, if I look back on my desktop and I click on our final chrome.lnk file, it's nothing special right now. It still just opens Chrome. But if I try to open up that final LNK file within Notepad, we can see all the contents of both our original files put together. The first part is all nonsense, binary data that represents our blueprint.lnk file, and that's why we added the slash b argument to the copy syntax, by the way. And then at the very end, we see our we are running text from our code.hta file. So we have successfully combined these two files to create our polyglot, but it's not all that interesting right now. We'll need to make some changes to those two original files to make something cool. Let's edit our blueprint.lnk file and change the target from the properties. We'll actually set it to run itself. And I mean our final output shortcut, chrome.lnk. So let's change the syntax here to cmd slash c mshta and with two percent signs wrapping around the letter cd forward slash chrome.lnk. We'll use cmd or the command prompt to access that cd environment variable, and then we'll change the working directory to our desktop. And remember, we're making these changes to our blueprint.lnk file, but that will be morphed into the final chrome.lnk polyglot when we create it with the copy command in command prompt. And we can change the icon of this to Google Chrome, and we can also change the window mode to actually just run as a minimized window and not show anything on the screen. Now let's rebuild our final polyglot file by running the same copy command within the command prompt. I'll just hit the up arrow on my keyboard to move back in my command history and hit enter. Then we can go double click on our chrome.lnk shortcut file and rather than opening up Google Chrome like it did before, now we see the whole shortcut is executed as an HTA file. We are using MSHTA or that Microsoft hypertext application engine and interpreter to run the shortcut file itself. 
And of course, the HTML will just show and display all the junk and extra binary data from the LNK file at the top, but that is okay. This is a working proof of concept. And I know, I know this isn't super cool yet. We're still building this up. But now that we have our shortcut file actually calling itself, we can now go edit and modify our code.hta to control what really happens. We can reopen code.hta in Notepad and we can put some more proper HTA syntax there. I'll change the contents to this. HTA application, window state, blah, blah, blah. This tells it to run the hypertext application minimized and allows us to run some Visual Basic script code where we'll just pop up a message box and then automatically close the application. So building our polyglot now, again with the copy command, we now have a single standalone LNK file that could run any code that we want. And now, considering the shortcut file, all with just one click, and we can change the icon and the name, and since it is a natural scripting language, we could obfuscate it, try to hide some of the code, or make it as stealthy as we want for our malware or social engineering scheme. If we really wanted to, we could run other commands or start any other programs. We could even use PowerShell or Batch or just implement everything in that native Visual Basic script. So here's a cheeky example. I don't have antivirus running on this virtual machine, so we could make this single click shortcut just give us as ethical hackers or penetration testers a whole reverse shell. Or it could call back to a command and control server or just automatically collect information, do reconnaissance or enumerate or stage persistence. So I'll set up a netcat listener and I'll use MSF Venom to generate a Visual Basic script payload just to get us a reverse shell. And I know it's cheesy metasploit, but it will get the idea across. Ultimately, it ends up staging an executable that's base64 encoded, but this will prove that, okay, we're definitely bypassing and breaking that character limit. Now, I'll make a couple changes to this generated output. I am gonna toggle this program to run in a non-blocking mode, so I'll set that to false, and that way, the code will just continue running even after it starts or executes a new process. And I'll add in some code to open the normal or natural program that the user was expecting expecting to run, like Google Chrome in this case, and I'll start that in non-blocking mode just as well. Then we can simply close the HTA file so our temporary window goes away. Now this is the coolest thing. If I rebuild our final Google Chrome LNK polyglot, if I double click on it, it will run our arbitrary Visual Basic script, all the stuff that we just added in, clearly longer than the character limit, and it will get us a reverse shell. And at this point, we have a fully weaponized Windows shortcut file, an LNK and HTA polyglot. If we are done with the staging and preparation, we can delete those other two files, code.hta and our blueprint, and then we just have our final product, a single Windows shortcut file that is easily customizable with any icon, name, no file extension, and any code that we want to run. Hey, if you enjoyed this video and you thought that was kind of a cool trick, please do go check out the Pay What You Can training with the link below in the video description. And take a look at some of the other videos on this channel. One of the previous videos, we created a custom file extension in Windows, and we can actually use that same trick and technique here. Maybe sort of hot swapping how an LNK file file could be parsed as an HTA file, and then in your Visual Basic script, you just flip it back to normal LNK operations. Lots of cool, crazy, fun and wild ideas with that. But look, it's all about the education. It's all about the learning and ethical hacking. Please do all those YouTube algorithm things, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.